Okay, this is going to be a follow-up to a previous video about finding rational numbers between two fractions. So in that first video, I showed two methods for doing this, two ways to find a fraction that would fit in between two other fractions. And somebody asked me to prove that the second method would work. So let me just review the second method, and then I'll show you how the proof works. Let's say I've got two fractions, 4 over 5 and 7 over 8. And I want to find a fraction that's going to fit in between these two. Now, 4 over 5 is less than 7 over 8. So that means the fraction I would have would be one where 4 over 5 is less than that fraction, and that fraction is less than 7 over 8. And the method said do this. It said take the numerators of the two fractions that you have, add them together, and that will give you the numerator for the fraction in the middle. So 4 plus 7 is 11. And then do the same thing with the denominators. Take those two numbers, 5 and 8 in this case, add them together, and that will give you the denominator for the number in the middle. So this would mean that 4 over 5 is less than 11 over 13, and that's less than 7 over 8. So what we want to do is prove that this method will always work. To do the proof, instead of using numbers, we use letters. So I'm going to say I've got two fractions, a over x and b over y. And let's say that a over x is less than b over y. So if I put a fraction in between, that's going to mean that a over x is less than that fraction, and that fraction is less than b over y. Using the method we have, the fraction in the middle is going to be a plus b over x plus y. And now I want to prove that this will always work for any numbers. So what I'm going to do is prove it in two parts. First, I'm going to prove that a over x is less than a plus b over x plus y. So let's write that. a over x is less than a plus b over x plus y. And I'll put a question mark above the inequality sign because that's what I want what I want to check. I want to see if this is true. So the first step is going to be to cross multiply. I'm going to multiply a times x plus y. That's going to give me ax plus ay. And now I want to see if that's less than what happens when I cross multiply x times a plus b, which is ax plus bx. I've got ax on both sides of this inequality, so I can subtract from that from both sides. I'll just cross them out. Now the question is, is ay less than bx? Well, let's divide both sides by y. When I do that, I'm going to get a. We want to see if that's less than bx over y. And now I'm going to divide both sides by x, and that's going to give me a over x is less than b over y. And I know that's true because that's the fact that I began with. Remember, I began by saying, let's assume that a over x is less than b over y. So now what I've done is I've shown the proof for the first part of this. I've shown that a over x is always going to be less than a plus b over x plus y. Then all we have to do is show that a plus b over x plus y is always going to be less than b over y. And that's basically going to be the same kind of proof all over again. So I've got a plus b over x plus y, and I'm asking whether that's less than b over y. So I'll cross multiply. I'll have ay plus by. I want to know if that's less than bx plus by. So I've got by on both sides of the inequality. I'll subtract them out. I'll just cross them out. I've got ay is less than, that's what we're asking, is less than bx. I'll divide both sides by y. So I'll have a 
is less than bx over y. Then I'll just divide both sides by x, and I'll have a over x is less than b over y, which once again is exactly what I began with. We said that a over x was less than b over y. So now that I've shown that these last two fractions, that the a plus b over x plus y is less than b over y, I've shown that this whole inequality is true, and that the fraction that I created, the one in the middle, actually does fall in between these two other fractions. Now, just in case you're wondering what would have happened if a over x was greater than b over y, I would just put greater than signs in here, the proof would work out exactly the same. I would just have signs going in the other direction. But it would still be the same proof. Okay? So I hope that helps. Take care. I'll see you next time.